something massive just happened in the world of technology, and no one was truly ready for it. On April 12, 2025, China officially ended all contracts with ASML and TSMC. That's right, Beijing cut off every procurement deal for ASML's lithography machines and halted all chip orders from TSMC across state-linked firms. Analysts at Bernstein are calling it the most decisive shift in semiconductor independence since 1987. But the most shocking part isn't that China walked away. It's that they seem completely ready to replace what they've lost. For the past year, China has been rapidly building its own semiconductor infrastructure. SMIC has doubled its DUV-based chip-making capacity, producing over 310,000 wafers per month, double what they made in 2023. For ASML, this move has immediate consequences. Their EEV systems, which account for nearly 70% of their profits, are now banned from the biggest growth market in the world. UBS analysts reported a 12% drop in advanced tool bookings from Asia in Q1 of 2025 alone. TSMC, meanwhile, is facing a strategic crisis. Their $100 billion expansion, celebrated in Washington as a geopolitical win, is now a vulnerability. China has blacklisted all TSMC chips above 7 nanometers. The Taiwanese giant is now forced to prioritize U.S. national security demands, not market logic. But again, the real shock isn't that China left. The shock is what they've built instead. Back in 2020, when the U.S. slapped Huawei with heavy restrictions, many thought it was the beginning of the end for Chinese chip ambitions. No more TSMC, no more ASML, no more EUV machines. But instead of collapsing, China innovated. In just five years, Huawei and SMIC came back with the Mate 70 Pro, a phone powered by a domestically manufactured 7 nanometer chip. This chip was made using DUV lithography and self-aligned quadruple patterning without a single foreign tool or imported wafer. According to a February 2025 analysis by Tech Insights, the chip had a transistor density about 17% below Apple's A17 Pro, but it was still competitive in AI performance benchmarks. Then came the Ascend 910C, Huawei's new AI chip, built to compete with NVIDIA's H100. It entered volume production in March 2025 at Huawei's Qingpu facility. By the end of Q2, over 30 domestic AI firms had signed supply deals. This wasn't just a workaround. This was a total architectural pivot. China wasn't playing catch-up anymore. It was changing the direction of the race. Even more impressive? SIMC has quietly begun developing chips near the 3 nanometer threshold without using EUV. Most experts said this wasn't possible. Without EUV, the complexity of creating 3 nanometer chips would cause costs to explode and yields to collapse. But in April 2025, teardown data of a leaked SIMC prototype showed gate lengths as small as 34 nanometers, almost reaching 3 nanometer territory. They used quadruple patterning, which triples cost and production time, and current wafer yields are around 40%, according to IC Lab Asia. But Beijing doesn't care. Their goal isn't Western-style economic efficiency, it's volume resilience. State subsidies cover the losses, domestic AI and defense demand guarantees the output. China's strategy isn't capitalist, it's geopolitical, and it's laser-focused. A March 2025 report from Morgan Stanley said it best. China doesn't need to match TSMC's cost structure. It just needs to scale a working alternative faster than sanctions can stop it. And there's another shift. NVIDIA's exit from the Chinese AI market in late 2024, triggered by U.S. bans on its top chips, left a multi-billion dollar vacuum. Huawei moved fast. By May 2025, it was shipping the Ascendant 910C-A, a new chip made by combining two 910D dies in one advanced package. It hit about 75% of the H100's performance, but at only 55% of the cost. China AI TechWatch reports that Huawei sold out its first batch to state-backed cloud firms in just 11 days. SMIC's DUV line, which uses self-aligned quadruple patterning, increased yield from 31% in January to 56% by May. This isn't technical parity, it's strategic asymmetry. 
Huawei doesn't need to match NVIDIA on every metric. It only needs to deliver good enough chips on time. And right now, it is. By mid-2025, over 82% of the materials and tools used in China's sub-10 nanometer chips are made inside China. SMIC's new megafab in Shenzhen, completed in just 16 months, is now producing 45,000 7 nanometer class wafers per month. Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment, or SMEIA, completed its first batch of 28 nanometer lithography tools in March and is aiming for 14 nanometers by late 2026. More than 1,500 engineers from TSMC and UMC have joined mainland Chinese firms since 2022, drawn by salary offers three times higher than before. China's $47 billion semiconductor fund was restructured in 2024 and now prioritizes vertical integration. While ASML relies on Germany's Zeiss optics and Japanese photonics, China is building an in-house ecosystem, slowly, steadily. And here's the most stunning part of all. In February 2025, a leaked engineering document from China's state key laboratory of laser technology revealed a new kind of EUV source, the LDP, or Laser-Induced Discharge Plasma System. This new system claims a 90% drop in power use compared to ASML's LPP-based EUV machines. It skips the high-energy tin droplet system entirely and instead uses a two-stage discharge technique that produces EUV light at 13.5 nanometers, the same wavelength used by ASML, but with 0.8% efficiency, about eight times higher than Western designs. Applied Optics Beijing confirmed that early lab tests had created usable EUV light at significantly lower thermal loads. If this works, and that's still a big if, ASML's 170 million euro machines that use over one megawatt of power could be replaced by something cheaper, cooler, and simpler. ASML has already reduced its EUV shipment forecast by 18% this year, and quietly, it's begun redesigning its own light source architecture. Because the pressure is real. TSMC's Arizona Fab is exposed. Locked into U.S. national security clauses with $6 billion in subsidies, ASML is caught between Dutch export restrictions, U.S. political pressure, and the growing loss of Asian customers. In the first quarter of 2025, TSMC's fab utilization dropped from 89% to 76%, largely due to canceled Chinese contracts, according to TrendForce. Meanwhile, Canon has entered the race, selling 27 units of its new FPA 1200 DUV system to Southeast Asia in just five months a non-aligned alternative to ASML. ASML's dominance isn't gone, but its moat is shrinking. And now others are starting to take China's seat at the table. Still, there are challenges ahead. China's mirrors for EUV still struggle with the extreme precision needed, with over 100 multi-layer coatings that must be defect-free at the nanometer scale. Domestic photoresist chemicals aren't yet ready for mass EUV production. Metrology tools for mask alignment still fall short of Western standards. But things are changing fast. The Chinese government just allocated billions for four pilot lines to test full-stack EUV manufacturing. As Bernstein's Lisa Chow said, China has proof of concept. What it doesn't have yet is repeatability under pressure. But remember what they said in 2020 that Huawei could never make a 7 nanometer chip. Look where we are now. So here's the big question. If China breaks free from ASML and TSMC and builds a system that's leaner, cheaper, and energy efficient, what happens to the global tech stack? Who controls the AI servers, the military targeting systems, the next wave of quantum computing? Right now, ASML controls the light. But what if China just cracked the bulb? And if they did, who really rewrites the rules of war, wealth, and power? Drop your answer in the comments. Make sure to like this video if you found it insightful, and don't forget to subscribe. The chip war is no longer coming. It's already here.